Hey y'all, it is I, Anthony the Canadian Guy, and welcome to WrestleSode, the solution to your wrestling information problems. WrestleSode is a member of the Win Column Sports Network, so remember to check us out at wincolumnsports.ca to be kept up to date on everything happening here in Alberta in the world of wrestling. So, as you can tell, I have a bit of a cold, but don't worry, that's not going to affect today's podcast, because I am bringing to you an interview with the gentleman grappler himself, Leo London. Now, this interview was recorded a little bit before Christmas, so don't worry, I have no head colds in it, and you get to enjoy the podcast as it is. But before we get into that interview, we have a couple of show notes here, just to go over. So, we are nearing the end of Season 1, so first off, thank you everybody who has joined me in on this season. We have this podcast and another one coming up for you on January 2nd, an interview with the golden child Kayla J, which will be finishing up season one of Wrestle. So it's amazing to be able to say something like that. And thank you all once again for joining me along this ride. Season two is coming with a whole bunch of cool new things. We're going to be changing up the programming a little bit here, and you'll be getting some more information on that as season two approaches. But the first episode will be Monday, January 6th. It will be an interview of Real Canadian Wrestling's Retribution, which will be taking place on Friday, January 3rd. So if you're listening to this and you are in the Calgary area, remember to hit up RCW's Retribution. Go to their Facebook page and get your tickets, or you can buy them at the door. It's going to be a great time, so remember to check that out. But you know what? Without much further ado, we're just going to get into a quick note here from our sponsors over at the Wind Helm Sports Network and directly into our interview with Leo London. Now, Leo London has wrestled some great and huge names in the world of wrestling. Names like Colt Cabana. Names like Mike Quackenbush. Names like Kenny Omega. Yeah, Leo London has been in the ring with all of them, and he is an amazing story. So remember to listen in right after this break. When things aren't going right for your team, you scream at the television. When things are going right, you throw up a fist pump. The Win Column Sports Network puts your passion into words. Along with our affiliates Below the Ice, Duncan Duma, and Backbreaker Media, the Win Column Sports Network provides professional-level coverage of semi-professional franchises, athletes, and organizations in Edmonton. Get in the Win Column with a fan's perspective on local sports with stories you can only find online at wincolumnsports.ca. Hey y'all, Anthony here. I am joined by Leo London. Leo, how are you doing today, buddy? I'm good, thanks. Had a nice date night with the wife. Ooh, fantastic. I obviously don't want to get into too too much detail there, but how is Ella today? She's good. That's good to know. (laughs) Enjoying uh, Christmas season and all that stuff. Yeah, the holidays are coming up here. It's it's always an exciting time of year, and it always makes me realize that I buy Christmas gifts just way too late. That's one of my I'm way too early, so... (laughs) Oh, well, you have the better problem, I think, than to have. You get it when everything's on sale and not a giant rush into everything. But anyways, besides that, Leo, I have you here because I am trying my best to promote Western Canadian wrestling, things like that. And you know what? We've been talking on Twitter for quite a while. We always seem to be just engaged in awesome conversations on Twitter. And uh, I was like, I got to have this guy on my podcast. So Thank you once again for being here. Let's talk a little bit about Leo London, where are you wrestling, where you come from, things like that. Uh, I would say my home promotion is Premier Championship Wrestling in Winnipeg. Mm -hmm. But I've also frequented a lot of promotions out in Alberta, uh, CWC, RCW mostly. Right. Great Uh, stuff. Yeah. High Impact Wrestling in Saskatchewan was my last Saskatchewan-based promotion. Mm -hmm. And just... Lots of odds and ends between there throughout the uh, nine years I've been active. That's crazy. So you've been you've been an active wrestler now for about nine years. You've held championships all over the place. Definitely, you said an eight-time tag team champion across multiple promotions and everything like that. Yeah. How how do you feel like the journey is as a wrestler from your first match until the point where you've been doing it nearly a decade, something like this? Um. It's been rough on my body, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, very demand- demanding psychologically, too. I don't think a lot of people are, when they're first getting in, I don't think there's any trainer in the world who could really prepare you psychologically for what the demand is. Even if you were to wrestle once a month, there's a great deal of commitment that goes into uh, even that one appearance, and it can be very demanding on you. And... Uh, I wasn't ready for that when I started, but now I've kind of reached the point where I can, I'm prepared for it all the time. 
I'm much more comfortable out there, that's for sure. And uh, I'm taking a lot of a lot less unnecessary risks than I was when I was younger and stupid. You kind of felt like you had more to prove back then, so you would be like, I got to make this extra bump or something like that. Yeah, I would do stuff like, uh, so one of my favorite wrestlers is Mitsuharu Misawa, and my favorite sequence of matches is between him and Kenta Kobashi. So I would take unnecessary head drops and all these kinds of things that, because I thought that's what people wanted to see because Ring of Honor was really hot at the time and American strong style and all that crap. And then Mm -hmm. a veteran named Adam Knight told me to stop doing that shit. (laughs) And uh, yeah, that was the end of it. I kind of, now I I protect myself a lot more and yeah, just older and wiser. You learn as you go along and shut up there to the outlaw Adam Knight. Uh, so that was really cool to hear. I, it, it, it's, it's always fun when you talk to wrestlers because you always ask them about like their first matches and everything like that. And they're always like, I didn't know what I was doing and it hurt way too much because of it kind of a thing. Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, Do you remember your first match very well? Uh, not really, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, like you said, it, 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 you've wrestled hundreds of matches probably by this point of course i didn't have every statistic i could find but i've got at least 127 recorded ones here so uh, <laughs> i mean i'm at 573 exactly wow <laughs> holy cow it's amazing what you just sometimes just can't get until you chat with somebody 573 wrestling matches over your nine-year career so things must start blending together at some point <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I do have a notebook somewhere with all my recorded matches and finishes and like all that stuff. I just don't have it. Oh, that's totally fine. Uh, So but you've also wrestled some pretty big names over your nine year career. Like I've seen here that you've wrestled against people like Steve Carino, Kenny Omega, uh, Mike Quackenbush recently. Yep, absolutely. Any more people I'm missing in your arsenal? (laughs) Uh, Jesse Neal, who works for TNA. Yeah, he was a very good opponent. Um, Cole Cabana. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Uh, twice, I think. Um, and I think those are the only like established names that I've worked against. Those are still some really big names. Uh, of all of those names, who would you say the best opponent was in the ring? Oh, I can't and I know that's it. all preference, right? <laughs> like, I mean, it comes down to who you, I guess you would say you felt the most comfortable or the story felt the most natural. Um, it's really tough to say because stylistically, you would think that Quackenbush would be the best match for me. Mm-hmm. But it was also very overwhelming, uh, an overwhelming situation as I'm in there with like, you know, some kids, they wanted to wrestle Hulk Hogan or, or something like that. No, I just wanted to wrestle Mike Quackenbush. <laughs> <laughs> and that's in it. I know that he was finishing out his career uh, this year. Um, I'm pretty sure it finished like a day or two ago through his entire every everything like that to it have was ha- not a retirement tour. Oh, I'm sorry. It, it was I shouldn't say retirement tour because I mean, it's wrestling. But these were like his this was like his year. We wanted to get was it 15 matches, I believe uh, 25. He wanted 25. to do 25 matches to celebrate his 25 years. So that's what it was. Thank you. I'm sometimes I just forget things. There's so much that's going on in the world of wrestling. It's so much fun, though. Yeah. So <laughs> so you said that, you know, you would think he would be uh, the most natural. But you like you said, you have that probably nerves because you've been wanting to wrestle this guy. He's been a hero for however long you've been watching wrestling. Yeah, I wanted to impress and I wanted to like PCW put a great deal of faith in me that night. Like the whole thing came about just because I wanted it. And I just happened to uh, when he opened himself up for people to ask uh, to come for him to come and wrestle if it would mean something to them. And I took the opportunity before I even said anything to PCW. And when he got in touch with me, I was blown away because I figured he's got hundreds of messages. He's not going to respond to some kid he's never heard of in Winnipeg. And when he did, I was like, oh, I don't know where this match is going to take place. So that's yeah. hmm? I was going to say, that's got to have been so like suddenly you're just like, oh, my God, this can actually happen. How did you approach PCW with that? Uh, I just said, uh, told Andrew, hey, uh, I contacted Mike Quackenbush. He won't like we're talking about a match what do you think? And he's like, yeah, let's do it. And he pretty much let me get the whole thing going. That is such a cool story. And then you got to plan and work with him. And then obviously you got to wrestle with Mike Quackenbush. But uh, you've been a tag guy for quite a bit there alongside. How is it to wrestle with your, like, your actual brother? Uh, it's perfect for us. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> we're very comfortable together as partners. And uh, his, his positives as a performer balance out my negatives and vice versa. He, he like exhumes energy and charisma and all that stuff and i 
I'm more reserved person and I just want to wrestle. <laughs> so he takes care of most of that stuff and our entrances and all that kind of stuff. And then I, I have a bit more match experience. So I tend to put the matches together or at least have more influence over them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, he's great. That's really cool. So you guys are a part of the gentleman's club. Can you tell us a little bit about what the gentleman's club is? Uh, the gentleman's club started as three people, my brother, uh, myself and Alex Vanna. And we were originally, it started as a bit of a gag where me and my brother were competing for Alex Vanna's affection. We had a man crush on him. And when we discovered that the crowd was kind of picking up on it, we decided, okay, what if we actually loved him? And it was like a relationship. And when that started to take off, um, Andrew got the idea. It's like, okay, what if he breaks up with you? And he tells you he never loved you and like all that stuff. And we got turned baby face because of something we thought would be funny. And it got turned into a like an LGBT positive storyline that I ended up being very proud of. So now the Gentleman's Club is just being my brother and the fans, I guess. That's a really great. I love to hear that kind of story. I know from listening in and uh, from some of the other podcasts that you have been a part of, I know that uh, Alex Vanna earlier this year, I guess, swerved you and your brother and cost you the titles uh, and uh, that you've been wanting to get your revenge on him ever since. Yep. And he's been very dodgy about it. We got to get that out. Vanna, you hear this, buddy? Leo London is coming for you. The Gentleman Club is coming. <laughs> so you 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 are working with PCW but i mean as of late you and your youtube channel obviously you've been working on things like glitter and arm bars for a long time do you want to talk a little bit about glitter and arm bars uh yeah sure so that started off as me and my fiance who is also a professional wrestler Ala Blake um just trying to catalog our journey through the business and uh yeah it was fun uh i think we've slowed down on it because we kind of run out of things to say. There's only so much we can say about, yeah, we're getting ready for this match or what have you. And uh, yeah, it's just taking a back seat for now. That's totally fine because, I mean, you've been keeping yourself busy now. Your YouTube channel has been, uh, I, I guess you could say it's now the Yugi Leo channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of shifted focus um, to a card game I play now called Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm, I'm based off the anime that I'm sure lots of people who grew up in the 90s watched. Oh um, yeah, I, everybody I knew, anyways. <laughs> All the cool kids. That's who I like to hang out with. Um, yeah, and I didn't think anything of it when I posted. Uh, I just for fun recorded the deck that I used and created. Um, put a specific combo in it to get one of my favorite monsters on the field, which is not typical for the deck that I was using. And when it blew up, I kind of steered into the curve and decided that that's the direction I was going to go in with the channel from now on. <laughs> So, and yeah. it's it, it seems like it's doing really well for you. Some of these views that you've got here are pretty intense, especially for just switching over into it. Uh, yeah, I can't explain why it blew up. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're huge numbers for me anyways. And gaining so many subscribers in such a short period of time was really cool. And I'm very grateful that everything is kind of fallen into place for me now it's just a matter of trying to carry that momentum forward yeah that's a I, I really like how you how you put it that way it's 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 really hard sometimes when everything suddenly kind of just gets fall or like falls on your lap and you're just like okay how do i run with this now yeah exactly so <laughs> yeah um, you said it perfectly <laughs> yeah uh, with regional i'm gonna go to the regionals which will be a chance for me to qualify for nationals and then if i do well there i'll be able to go to worlds but I don't expect to do it as I'm only a few months into actually playing at the competitive level. And for me to already be as successful as I am competitively is pretty phenomenal to me. So, hey, you know what? Sometimes people, they're just like naturally gifted at things and you just kind of start playing. I mean, I myself, I played Yu-Gi-Oh! I love Yu-Gi-Oh! I thought it was fantastic. <laughs> the kid, as a kid, I think we even had a conversation about this in Battle City. Like, that was one of the coolest like storylines in anime, in my opinion. I loved watching those. I became a big fan of bug-type Yu-Gi-Oh! because mm -hmm. of it. So, <laughs> but... Uh... It, it, not not just that, but like now that you are actively becoming more competitive in things like Yu-Gi-Oh, like you said, you're going to be going to like um, uh, regionals here pretty soon. Yeah. So like speak a little bit on how the competitive scene works within the Yu-Gi-Oh, within Yu-Gi-Oh in Canada here. OK, because I'm actually so, curious myself. <laughs> so most towns and cities will have just local competitions, which will happen probably weekly at your local game shop. 
And that's just for you to get used to the competitive environment. You'll probably face people who are using the top tier decks all the time. And you'll probably play people who are coming in with a shoebox of the cards they had 20 years ago. And uh, I don't even know if it's that old, but you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it'll, you'll get a good mix of both players. That's really cool. So when is going to be, uh, I guess you could say, like regionals in your area? <laughs> January 4th. <laughs> oh, what a horrible day for it to be regionals, right? <laughs> I mean, it's uh, yeah. just got to be a uh, uh, Wrestle Kingdom day. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, pack up, travel, go get myself back to Winnipeg for regionals, uh, compete. I, if I make the top cut, I will get an invite to nationals, which will take place in Toronto. And if I get the top cut there, I will get my invite to Worlds, which will be in Germany. Wow. And is this all happening over the course of the next how many months? Um I'm not sure when Worlds takes place. I think it's towards the end of the year. Okay. So it's more like you're just hitting all the qualifiers for it right now, kind of. Yeah. And if I don't if I don't get the top cut at regionals, I'm not going to travel. I could technically go any to any regionals, like even, I don't know, Minnesota and places like that if I wanted to. I'm not that I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> if uh, I was some... more experienced in the game at this point, sure, because I believe I would have a good chance of winning. But at this point, I'm very, being very realistic in my expectations. Yeah, it's, you're still relatively new, what you would say, to the competitive scene and uh, kind of following this over something like, um, I don't know, other types of hobbies. I always have hobbies every like six months, something comes and goes a little bit for me. So, But wrestling always seems to be a consistent one, so that's pretty nice. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> so besides... Um, Yu-Gi-Oh and wrestling in terms of competitiveness. Is there, is there other things that you've done in the past that you would say you've done on a competitive level? Um, I compete in the VGC for Pokemon, which is the video game championships. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there was a point where I was like the 39th ranked player in Canada. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I mean, I know the dedication something like that takes. It gets pretty crazy when you start looking into, you know, like having to catch specific types of Pokemon because they get specific types of stats and you want to use specific. Uh, it's crazy how detailed some of that stuff can really get. Yeah, people don't people who only play it on the surface level don't understand like the depth that VGC can have, especially because VGC is not one on one Pokemon. It's two on two. You have to like, oh, there's so much thinking about it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I'm the type of person when it comes to and I get my all the listeners and everybody listening today is going to be like, I love I, I hope they say they love when I go off on competitive rants because I come from a competitive gaming background myself. So mm -hmm. I, I've kind of come from that like weird stigma where I'm like, no, I helped create the scene of competitive gaming. Like this is where it's been my like the last 15 years. And it's just so cool to see how it's evolved over so many different mediums. Yeah. It's now like something that people will fill stadiums to watch. <laughs> Isn't that so cool? I remember back in my first competitive Counter-Strike 1.6 days, like 15 years ago, it would be like classrooms in a university that, with like five or six people there. <laughs> uh, I miss those days. It's so much fun to compete in stuff. How, so, so do you feel like with the Yu-Gi-Oh scene, you're getting like a, how do I want to say this? like a sense of purpose and like endorphin rushes uh, when, when you feel like you're competing at a higher level? Um, I don't know about that. I have a lot of, I just go and have fun and uh, yeah, enjoy talking to people about the game and meeting different people who play from like wherever and what cards are special to them or whatnot. It's always just fun to chat. As for like, I don't get like super competitive because at this point I'm still, like I said, realistic about my expectations. That's fair. Yeah. I think, uh, uh, and I, I, I think that's the best part about competitive anything, whether or not you're going to be doing it in Yu-Gi-Oh or in wrestling, is that everybody's there and they all have different reasons for wanting to be there. And it, it's just it's so cool to have like a community of like minded people who just love and share a passion and just want to embrace that. Yeah, exactly. So I just kind of absorb as much of it in as possible. Fantastic. So, buddy, we've talked a little bit about uh, some of your uh, past in uh, wrestling and everything like that. One thing I wanted to talk about is that you've got one of the coolest engagement stories uh, here to Ella Blake. Uh, would you want to talk a little bit about what you did? Because I thought this was really cool. Um, what aspect would you, did you think was really cool? <laughs> well, so you you did it on the night that you were wrestling Mike Quackenbush. You did it, I would say, in a manner that is slightly more unorthodox. You said this was more of a Greek tradition. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. Strictly so Greek. I strictly Greek. Yeah. So and I don't know much about the the Greeks and throwing the apple. So if you could explain that, that would be really cool. Okay. So 
back in ancient Greece, uh, a proposal of marriage is throwing an apple at the person you want to marry, and then they would catch it, which is kind of funny when you think about it, because if she didn't want to marry you, she either gets beamed in the face or she catches it. <laughs> um, yeah, so I just felt that it was, I don't know, time in our relationship for that to happen. So I very, very covertly set up the whole thing without her knowledge. I got I got Adam Knight and a guy named Davy O'Doyle to add as like to act as like security to keep her in the in the locker room while I was wrestling because after the match I had to explain a Greek proposal to people otherwise they wouldn't understand what was happening <laughs> and uh, I think Quack was in on it too and then I told my brother that he had to go get Ella Blake as the match concluded so all of that kind of fell into place and then we did it on the show and I don't know. It's been it's been talk of wedding ever since, <laughs> dude. That see, I love that story. That just is such a cool story. I feel like I could never be that creative. I I I just I hear something like that, and like it's the type of thing where like every girl in the world is going like, why can't you do stuff like that? <laughs> <laughs> But uh, so congratulations to you and Ella Blake. Of course, I, I didn't get a chance to say that, but congratulations. Oh, thank you very much. Thank You're you. Very, very... Oh, hi, Ella. <laughs> thank <Hi>. you. <laughs> Apparently, Ella's hanging out here with us, too. That's super cool. Uh, so fantastic. I was just going to uh, wrap up here things in a couple of bit. Or Sorry, I'll just say that again. I'm just going to wrap up things here a little bit before we end up closing up for the day. So you have a couple more matches. Like you said, you're wrestling here in PCW. When is your next upcoming match? Do you know off the hand? Uh, I think it's January 18th, I think is the next PCW date. Fantastic. For everybody who's in the Winnipeg area, is it going to be taking place in Winnipeg? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. So anybody in the Winnipeg area, I hope you'll be there to watch that. Leo London here is super awesome. And you know what the real big shame is? I've never had a chance to watch you wrestle live. I've obviously watched so many of your videos and such on YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I've listened to your podcast. It's a shame, in my opinion, that I've never got to see you wrestle live. So I'm hoping I'll get my chance to here in 2020. I'll try to make I'll try to make it. Me and Spencer, we got to make it out to uh, a PCW show anyways, right? So... <laughs> Yeah, I was a uh, I was a little disappointed when Spencer wasn't able to make it in for the quack match. Um, yeah, I know, especially when he said it on his podcast. That jerk. Yeah. <laughs> a I lot like of people him. came in from very far away, and I was really blown away by the amount of people who cared about me wrestling my hero enough that they were going to travel that far. I'm sure a lot of the fact is that it's Mike Quackenbush, and he's one of the most amazing performers, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, the fact that enough people cared about me getting my WrestleMania moment per se was pretty huge. It's very yeah. humbling. It, it, I love the way that you spoke about it because you, every time you would bring it up and uh, whether it be one of your glitter and arm bars or whether it be on a podcast with someone like Spencer, you always talked about it with such like high regard. You obviously see Mike Quackenbush with such, uh, I guess you could say respect and intensity almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And meeting him in person didn't change that at all. He, uh, he, they always say don't meet your heroes and you'll never be disappointed but i to people who believe that i say you pick the wrong heroes because mike was everything i wanted him i expected him to be as a person and put up with my like fandom <laughs> to an extent <laughs> um and he was super respectful super cool i gotta hear him say a naughty word which was really funny to me <laughs> <laughs> it's like no that's taboo that's like oh geez yeah, he, he's so well-spoken and stuff when he, I don't know if I should say this, but he's so well-spoken and stuff when he's on podcasts and all those things. He, like, mm -hmm. never cusses. But first time I heard of swear, I was, like, floored. <laughs> it's weird when that, that transition happens. Like I like you said, I couldn't really picture Mike Quackenbush swearing because, you said like you said, on, on interviews and on podcasts, he's such a well-spoken guy. I've even made the comment once, like, if he ever stopped wrestling, just start being a public speaker so people would just listen to you talk. But, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's, <laughs> but uh, it, yeah, it's, it's weird when suddenly you're kind of behind that, that smile and you're just like, he swears. He just swears. He's a real person. <laughs> person now <laughs> yeah exactly so uh, yeah. what else what else could we uh can, where, where can we find you like what what are some upcoming things obviously like you said you're gonna be at the qualifiers you're gonna be at the pcw show um i know you recently just moved around a little bit uh like i guess is winnipeg still where you're gonna be mostly based out of your wrestling out of or are you are you gonna see yourself wrestling more in saskatchewan maybe now that you're a little bit closer uh i'm honestly not sure the wrestling scene in Saskatchewan has kind of been turned on its head with HIW folding and other just lots of things going on. So I'm not sure if I'm going to fall into place here. And uh, 
I'm not sure how much longer I have in the tank to keep wrestling with my real life career and education and things like that taking priority. That's right. Yeah. You said that you're recently in school. So um, I know, I'm sorry, I think you said you were taking uh, classes in clinical psychology. Is that correct? Uh, yes. What is it that you would say that like, when, you, when, you're, when you're all said and done, what is it that you would love to do? In wrestling? I would, I could just in life, even if it's not wrestling, like where do, where do you want to be? Where does Leo London want to be? Well, I just want to do something where I'm making the world a better place than when I came into it. Uh, so that's my objective now. I really love that, man. I, I think I heard you say something uh, of a similar nature on the conversations with love where you, you always want to leave something better than when you got there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, same with wrestling with, you know, uh, people I meet like locker rooms that I'm in. I just want to leave them better than when I leave them better than when I came in. So, for example, I, I'm not going to say who, but somebody who works for PWA. Uh, no, wait, MPW. Okay. Uh, he was only in the PCW locker room once. And it was years later, out of the blue, he sent me a message saying, like, you know, I'm, I met you at PCW and you were immediately like you and your brother were totally cool with me. You never tried to big league me. And I was new in the business and I was used to people kind of, you know, treating me like I was new in the business. And you guys made me feel totally at home. And I want you to know I really appreciate that. And uh, man, that means as much to me as somebody saying, you know, they love my matches or something. <laughs> I, you know what, it's sometimes it's those types of compliments that really hit home because it's like, you know, it's great to say like, hey, dude, you had a fantastic match and that's not uncommon for you. But for, for someone to really kind of like pull at those like more, I guess you could say unused heartstrings from time to time, those are the kind of things that really make you feel like you, like a really awesome person. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's how I, I want to be as much as sometimes, uh, I can I understand when people may think I have a bad attitude or something because I don't handle stress and things like that very well, which is part of my own psychological makeup. Uh, so I can be standoffish at times or what have you, but I try not. You know, it's funny in every engagement I've ever had with you, I would never have guessed that you could be kind of standoffish and stuff because you've always come across as just such a cool guy to me in everything that you've done. So, <laughs> well, but I mean, everybody's try. different, right? Yeah, exactly. You're actively <laughs> trying. So I think you've done a fantastic job. Leo, before we go, I want to leave you with just a couple quick questions here to kind of rapid fire. If sure. you could have any dream match, what would it be? Well, I don't know. So I've already had Perino and Quackenbush. <laughs> uh, That's right. Maybe Brian Danielson or Zack Sabre Jr. Really go down with like the technical aspect guys like Quackenbush and uh, like uh, Danielson. And that, that I think that works really well for you as the gentleman grappler. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's really great. And before we go, where can we find you, Leo? What's your Twitter? Plug your stuff for us, buddy. Um, everything is at Leo London 23. That's uh, Twitter, Instagram. Even my Facebook page is all Leo London 23. You can find me there, and I'm pretty willing to chat with you. That's awesome. All right, buddy. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I got to say, you were my first official interview that lasted more than like five or six minutes. So I hope I, hope I was good for you as it was for me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, buddy. You have yourself a wonderful day. And to everybody listening, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. What a fantastic interview, and thank you once again to Leo London. As we are wrapping up the end of 2019 here, and we have one podcast left coming out on January 2nd with Kayla J. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button on whatever podcast app you're listening to this on. Remember to give us a five-star rating and review. And remember to go check out Leo. He is a great guy. Go and talk to him about Yu-Gi-Oh! Go talk to him about wrestling. Go talk to him about his life. He's an awesome guy. He's just always doing cool stuff on Twitter. So remember to go check him out at Leo London 23 So that does it for me today, everybody. I hope you all had yourself a wonderful night, and I will see you again in two days, just after the new year, to close out Season 1 as we move into Season 2 of WrestleSode. So remember to stay tuned for that. Thank you again, and have a wonderful night. <laughs>